In this update, we've got an expanding heat dome that's really going to be impacting our weather for much of late this week and even into next week with this really dominating ridge of high pressure. Let me show you what we're talking about in the middle of the country. This is really going to be impacting a good part of the southern plains as well as the central plains. And this is going to be extending and lift, lifting northward into this weekend going into next week expanding into the upper midwest region as well and bringing some of the hottest temperatures so far uh, this summer so let's break down the details for you um in this update kind of expand and expand the view and show you what we're talking about this is a uh, hurricane fernanda out here into the open waters of the eastern pacific that's going to be continue to move westbound but we've got all these other systems trailing behind this one, and this is going to bring moisture into portions of the Southwest and even parts of California. They're going to actually get getting much needed rain and actually cooler conditions for you. Here we have a boundary across the middle of the country that's going to set up shop across severe storms today and across portions of the, of the east here while we have these low pressure centers coming in and off of canada traversing across the great lakes that also bring some instability of the weather but we also have this little tropical wave down here into the caribbean that's going to be lifting slowly moving into the gulf of mexico and may play a part in the extended term so let's talk about these details going forward and show you what we're talking about today so here's the water vapor imagery you've got the showers and thunderstorms we had a fairly decent significant cold front for august standards there's a lot of dry air and dry air cools quickly but it also is going to heat up quickly so for today we do have a round of showers and thunderstorms even some severe storms are going to be highlighted across the eastern portions into the carolinas back into portions of virginia there are your cooler anomalies heading into tomorrow morning some of the coolest temperatures you've seen in likely a month for some of these areas into the south below average temperatures which obviously you've been well above average but like i mentioned with this pocket of air cooler air it's also going to be heating up quickly as this ridge will be expanding in from the west and then it's going to be rapidly changing in a big way and where you're seeing below average temperatures you're going to see in well above average temperatures and sometimes in some cases some of the hottest temperatures you know of the summer so because by the time we head into thursday things rapidly change around in a big way this is your 850 50 temps up about 5,000 feet so you've got a lot of heat in the upper levels and it's all going to be transferred down to the surface and those hundreds are going to come back with a vengeance in a good part of texas they're going to be sneaking into oklahoma as that cooler air will be shifting off this ridge will slowly start to build in again we've got these little vorticities up into our northern regions across minnesota and cross portions of wisconsin that's going to bring some elevated rains across these regions and still somewhat on the cooler side for you you can actually see it on the vorticity map as we head into thursday we've got this little low pressure coming in and those that's going to be traversing east southeastward that's going to bring in some instability across the northern features of minnesota across wisconsin through the upper pa of michigan and that was going to be impacted with some showers and thunderstorms there we have the other system that's coming out of the eastern pacific that's going to spread moisture and pick up the monsoon for the desert southwest in combination of this other low pressure center also setting up shop across portions of uh, california you're going to be cooling down in a big way by the time we head into late this weekend but before that we've got some much needed rain starting to move back in the picture right so the combination of that low pressure center combination of the eastern pacific storms that's going to highlight and elevate these monsoonal rains back into these four corners regions where they desperately need the rain so this is actually a good sign to come while the middle of the country is just going to bake in a big way you can see by thursday wow it really comes back with a vengeance back into texas where you're experiencing somewhat cooler conditions today it's going to be completely the opposite by the time you head into thursday 108 in dallas 112 approaching and west of the west of uh, i-35 potentially 
these could be some of your hottest temperatures of the summer so far and that's just the beginning stages of what's to come as that heat dome will just be expanding uh, and then lifting further north and eventually heading up into the portions of the upper Midwest by the time we get into early next week. Here's the setup on the water vapor imagery by the time we head into Friday, right? So this is your Friday map. There's the drier air. So you got lower humidity at least that comes with this, but with the lower humidity, it's almost like a desert down here because these areas are bone dry and it's gonna be rapidly heating up in a big way. Those temperatures are gonna be surging and then look at that folks that's some beneficial rains are going to be sneaking in and even heavier rains back into the deserts back into the four corners regions even places like phoenix is going to get in the action las vegas is going to start to seeing some rain right death valley yuma those areas that never hardly see rain are going to be getting some beneficial rains across this region and even much cooler conditions as well while much of the middle of the country is under that heat dome, that sinking ridge of high pressure and very little rain, if not any, across those regions, you can definitely see where the ridge is across the surface map on Friday. It's right in the middle of the country, folks. So you've got to take advantage of those little vortices that come in off the northern fringes across the upper PA. That's going to be swinging across portions of New England and bringing some rain showers for them. There's the other system down in the Eastern Pacific. That's going to be the, you know, the, the component of bringing in some of that tropical you know, moisture down here into, off the, into the Eastern Pacific and pulling it inland. So this is definitely a good sign and only a good sign of what's to come as I think that will increase. So as this ridge, by the time we head into Friday, will be locked over Texas and over much of Kansas and Oklahoma and parts of Arkansas into Missouri. You're going to be getting all the heavy, you know, heavier rains across the desert southwest and into Southern California. More rains for probably for Florida. And then the only game in town further north away from this ridge is going to be parts of New England with some rain showers across those regions into Friday. But there's the temperatures for Friday, folks. 110, that's not a misprint. 110 would probably be almost the, one of the top 10 hottest temperatures ever recorded in Dallas, folks. Some serious heat heading your way. 112 probably in Wichita Falls. This will be likely your, you know, your hottest temperature so far. But look at the hundreds starting to spread further north as the ridge will start to really take hold and expanding further north. You've got hundreds showing up on the map in parts of the Dakotas, even into Montana, heading to Canada, folks, right? And that this ridge will just, just likely expand as we get deeper into the weekend and especially into early next week. There's your Sunday setup, still upper 100s back in Texas, Hundreds back in Oklahoma, 108 in Kansas. Those 104 start to extend into Nebraska, even almost triple digits back into Iowa, back into portions of Missouri here. So the heat dome is gonna be the real deal coming up for a good part of the country as we're still in the heart of August, your hottest time of the year. And it's gonna be feeling every bit of that for a good part of the center part of the country. There's the setup on the Climate Prediction Center. I mean, shows that ridge pretty impacting about 60 to 70 percent of the country with the most intense heat across the middle of the country so it's definitely a welcome sign out here in the, the, the desert southwest especially into phoenix where they've had that brutal conditions back in july where the 115s were just not end now you're getting a reprieve from that and it's going to be an extended reprieve as you got multiple days below average and multiple days of potential rain showers for your region across these regions into the deserts you know into arizona into southern california back into utah here back into nevada that might even extend into portions of idaho so this is going to be some definitely welcome rain <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, folks. Not very often do you see this. This is you only typically see this in the summertime. That's a lot of white showing up on the map. That's your ridge, folks. That's otherwise known as the death ridge. It just sinks anything, just eliminates and almost evaporates anything in its wake as the triple digits just bake across the middle of the country. 
So the only instability is cross portions of Florida where you're gonna have these little tropical waves still pretty moist down there back into Florida. But then you get the monsoonal rains, right? Look at the heavier rains extending into parts of the desert Southwest. And then you'll have these little vorticities that come across the Northern fringes elevating those showers and thunderstorms across the northern fringes of the upper uh, PA. But if you zoom in and look at some of these, you know, rainfall estimates by for the next week, most of this doesn't start until late week. But hey, we're looking at almost two inches in Flagstaff, over two inches in Prescott. I mean, Phoenix, about an inch of rain. That's very welcome. They've had little next to nothing really all summer long, really for the last four months. Yuma, these areas don't get much rain at all, all, all year. Maybe an inch of rain for those areas. Back into Las Vegas, about two inches. So this is definitely a good sign. If we extend northbound, even Utah gets in the action. Back into Cedar City, over two inches of rainfall potential, maybe even extended all the way to Salt Lake City. So this is definitely going to be some very welcome rain. Let's shift over to Southern California, right? So even into Southern California, if you got San Diego, possibly a half inch. But nonetheless, definitely some, some beneficial rains in areas that just haven't seen much in a while. So this is definitely a good sign to show up on the map. And the difference is once we head into early next week, there's the heat dome, right? This will be slowly lifting further north. So all these areas now, even more areas across the US are gonna be under that sinking ridged heat dome with the most intense, well above average, across portions of Iowa, probably Illinois, likely Missouri. Look what happens underneath, right? So typically what you look for, once this ridge, you got a ridge over the top, that tends to lower pressures underneath. And we've had those little tropical waves out there into the Atlantic and that one I showed you into the Caribbean. Well, by the time we head into late next week, right? We're talking maybe the middle of next week. We're talking seven to 10 days out. This is a long ways, but if the ridge does lift further north up into Iowa and have the most intense heat, that's gonna help lower the pressures underneath. That's gonna have some instability and have that tropical wave that was in the Caribbean. Now it's gonna be able to shift and arc back into the Gulf of Mexico. And the latest update from the EPS probability has about a 20, 30, possibly 40% probability of this maybe even taking in, taking shape of a tropical depression entity. Even if it doesn't, there are some ensemble guidances starts to see more areas of low pressure. So typically you've got one, two, you got about 15 members here of the European model, about 30%, right? About 30%, usually typically you want about 40% if this thing is gonna come to fruition, but it doesn't really have to, right? It doesn't really have to. It, they'll take any rain they can get down there into portions of Louisiana and into Texas. If you look at the drought map, I don't need to tell you, it hasn't rained had hardly had anything all summer, right? So these are areas where that tropical wave could potentially hit back into Louisiana, back into far South Texas. These are areas in a severe drought, if not an extreme drought. This is definitely could be, could be some much needed rain moving into those pictures into the extended term. This is likely beyond seven days, maybe 10 days from now with that weakness in the ridge over the top. And if it does come, we could be looking at potentially some heavier rains if that does is able to sneak in across and these actually move inland, right? I mean, you got plenty warm waters down there in the Gulf of Mexico. You've got lowering of pressures and it's likely gonna be a slow moving with the ridge over the top. So it could be some heavier rains back into portions of Southeast Texas that maybe even extended into Central Texas, probably South Texas, right? It's probably leaning towards those areas you know, as we get into the extended term, you know, around the 23rd, 24th, 25th time frame into August. So, so that's something we're going to be fine tuning as well, you know, kind of going forward. So guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, do like this video, definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update. Wire protect you before and after storm.